fellow pilot Terry and I are still exploring the arresting natural beauty of Manawe. Rather than just viewing the terraces from afar, we ventured to take a much closer look. We made our way to the rice terraces of Batan, one of the inscribed World Heritage Sites in the area. Getting there meant driving for an hour to the drop-off point. The Batad Rice Terraces are gaining popularity among tourists and more treks are being arranged to this site. It will be a bit of a hike from here. The thin air did not make it easier for us. So Terry and I stopped to take pictures of the view, the perfect excuse to catch our breath. Finally, this was the site that awaited us. An amphitheater of perfectly carved mountains. Terry, what do you think? Was the hike worth it? Definitely worth it. <laughs> Amazing place. Thank you so much for bringing me on this adventure. This is incredible. Following the contour of the mountains, the perfectly cut terraces extended thousands of feet upwards. Carved by hand, with stone walls put up using only hand tools and animal power, they received water from an ancient irrigation system coming from the rainforest. Heavy bundles of harvested rice are brought down to the steep slopes of the terraces. Rice and crops are the ideal food staple for a place that is landlocked and separated by forests and without salt available for food preservation. Though believed to have existed for over 2,000 years, recent carbon dating put the age of the terraces to only about 500 years old. Experts believe they were a response to the Spanish occupation as farmers were driven away to the mountains when colonizers invaded their lands. This does not diminish the importance of the heritage site, but rather affirms the technological sophistication of the Ifugaos who had to adapt to their surroundings and develop an advanced farming technique in such a short time. It is difficult to comprehend the scale and magnitude of the work done to build the terraces. Their length, if put end to end, can circle half the globe. Seeing Batad literally left us breathless, and we needed our strength early the next morning. Together with Jonathan's team, we went early to the launch site to test the wind direction and carefully evaluate scenarios. Here we are at the Immaculate Conception School in Banale. We've been trying to look for a spot to inflate the balloon. It's very tight everywhere, but here we have high tension wires, we have these poles, we have the flag pole, we have the basketball, and uh, it's really very tight, so we'll try our best to get it inflated. We decided to experiment with a smaller balloon just so that we have enough space. We don't get to fly the flag balloon until we're very sure. Everyone pitched in to lay down the envelope for inflating. Meanwhile, the balloon began to draw a crowd of curious school kids. Jonathan decided to terrify them as he tested the burner. That surely woke them up. As we put hot air into the balloon, the winds calmed down. 
the chilly morning in Manawi would have been perfect for a balloon flight. The balloon rose, but we had to check all sides and make sure it didn't hit any wires or flagpoles, which it did. But good thing the fabric did not rip. The look of amazement in the children's eyes was well worth the effort. As were the smiles and laughter that followed when we asked them to hop over to the basket. But pretty soon, we had to put the balloon down. Everyone seemed to be energized by the morning's accomplishment as we began folding the balloon away. It's fun to have the kids be able to try the balloon even on a tether flight. Really, the issue is where we could find a place where we can launch. Everything here in Manao is just by the side of the road, uh, very narrow. The balloon is too big. We could inflate the Philippine balloon because it's much bigger than this one. But the most fulfilling part is being able to share this experience with the kids that morning. What do you think of ballooning? Good and enjoying. You're enjoying? Yes, sir. Why did you enjoy? Because it's this is your first, first time. First time. <laughs> they also helped out in putting the balloon away. to inflate or even fly the bigger Philippine flag balloon. It would look iconic next to these national treasures. Well, we will try again tomorrow. Teacher Yoli of the Amganan Elementary School, who joined us that morning, invited us for a visit to find out more about passing down these traditions to the younger generations of Ifugaos. Amganet Elementary School is a school of living tradition. We teach these children this music and dance of the Ifugao. Once they grow up, do they uh, still feel yeah. that this is a part of them? Yes, they are taught to preserve and yeah. promote their culture. Hudhud? ancient form of chanting tells over 200 different stories that were never written down. It has recently been proclaimed by UNESCO as a masterpiece of intangible heritage of humanity. And schools like this one in Amgana have been mandated to be guardians of the tradition. children also perform the traditional songs and dances highlighting the Ifugao's rich culture, mythology, and beliefs. Their dances are full of symbolism. Their outstretched arms in deference to heaven and stooping motions being one with the earth. great to see the whole community being proud of their heritage. I felt very lucky to be able to spend some time with the children who are not only diligent about academics but in learning their culture as well. All I could teach them were some after-school games. Up next, we speed down the slopes of Banawe and find a deeper appreciation for the Ifugao's untouched culture.